Texas football continues their success at home, volleyball suffers their first conference loss of the season, and soccer season comes to an end. All that and more here tonight. This is College Festival. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us here on Halloween tonight. I'm your host, Tyler King. Now Texas was looking for their fourth consecutive win over an AP top-ranked opponent on Saturday with a win over Baylor. Now let's head over to DKR for the highlights. And here come the Horns, poised and ready for a win at home. Baylor will get the ball to start, and Seth Russell's going to keep it off the left side and run right past Dylan Haynes for a 50-yard touchdown to give Baylor an early 7-0 lead. Now after a Texas touchdown, Baylor's going to come back on their second drive, and Russell's going to try to force it in, but Chris Boyd pops the ball up, and Locke dives for the ball and snags the interception. Next play after the turnover, Deontay Foreman's going to bust a huge run from 37 yards out to give Texas a 14-7 lead and his first touchdown of the day. Next drive, Baylor's going to drive down the field, and Seth Russell's going to find Ish Samora from 20 yards out as Ish Samora runs around Holton Hill and through Jason Hall. Now we're going to fast forward to the end of the half with 13 seconds left Seth Russell is going to find Katie Cannon in the quarter of the end zone for a touchdown to cut Texas lead to 23-21 just before the half. Now coming out of the half Texas second play of the third quarter Deontay Foreman is going to break a 40-yard run to give himself a thousand yards on the season becoming the first Texas thousand yard rusher since Jamal Charles in 07. Two yards out Terrence Williams is going to break the Texas lead and give Baylor a 28-26 lead. Now Going to the fourth quarter with three minutes left, Shane Bouchelle is going to find Lorenzo Joe over the middle. Lorenzo Joe is going to take the ball down to the Baylor 13-yard line and give Texas great position to score to cut the Baylor lead. Two plays later, Shane Bouchelle is going to play action to Deontay Foreman, find Andrew Beck out in the left flat, and he's going to take it in from nine yards out to cut the lead to two points after Texas fails the two-point conversion. Later in the fourth quarter, Bouchelle is going to find Foreman down the left sideline for a great play to put Texas in position to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. Now, Trent, senior Trent Domingue is going to have a chance, 39-yard field goal, and it's going to go straight through the uprights. It's good. Texas wins the game 35-34 after they hold Baylor on the last possession of the game. For more on Texas' upset over top 10 ranked Baylor, here's our own Mackenzie Palmer, who is at DKR for the game. The Texas Longhorns shocked the eighth-ranked Baylor Bears, pulling out an upset of 35-34. Texas defense came ready to play, showing improvement with pressuring Baylor quarterback Seth Russell and capitalizing on turnovers. But the offense held their own with standout Deontay Foreman rushing his best career high and scoring his ninth and tenth touchdowns of the season. Tonight was all about Deontay Foreman and his 250 yards rushed this game, adding to his record breaking of more than 1,000 yards rushed in a season. This is something that hasn't been done since Jamal Charles lasted it in 2007. I'm, I'm so proud, you know, we haven't had one here since Jamal Charles 2007. You know, like I said, I went hug every lineman in the locker room and tell them thank you. You know, without them, without the blessings from God, like, I wouldn't have been able to do it by myself. You know, he, he's just playing at a different level, and then he, he wants to be the best back in the country, and right now he's playing like he is the best back in the country. And, and you just watch him, some of those yards, you know, he's going to get the big runs, but also there's those, you know, two and three where he has to grind it out and he has to pound it. But it's, it's the way he works. I don't know what it is, but he needs to keep doing it. Um, it's, it's fun to watch him, being able to, to give it to him and watch him, watch him run the ball. You know, it's a lot of fun seeing what you can do with it. You this win cools the seat of head coach Charlie Strong, who has been facing criticism on how the Longhorns' current performance has gone this season. I really care about the team that really cares about me, 
And it's not a program that's in disarray, which many of you think. It's not a program that is, is going backwards. It's a program that's headed forward, and it's a program that is going to be a special, it's going to be special one of these days when you watch this program really take off. Next week, the Longhorns face rival Texas Tech, and Texas fans will look to see if the Longhorns can continue to improve. Mackenzie Palmer, College Press Box. So with us tonight is analyst Jordan Sanchez. Jordan, what a win for Charlie and the boys. Monumental. You know, I don't know how they do it, but every time their back is up against the wall, Texas seems to come through. They just need to have their back against the wall every game. I don't know. <laughs> so this morning, defensive tackle Paul Boyett talked about how much the playing a complete game helps with the win over Baylor. We just came out there and played a complete game. We just played for each other and played for the coaching staff, really. Uh, we didn't let nobody break our spirit throughout the week. We just band together. Our preparation started on started on last Sunday, preparing for Baylor, not taking, not uh, discrediting Baylor because they have a fantastic program. But I think our preparation just carried from uh, day to day, and it was just a build up to, to Saturday. We just cut loose and had fun. Now, Jordan, Texas won another big game at home. But, you know, what was it that the defense did to help give the offense a chance to win at the end of the game? You know, they stayed aggressive the whole time. This team never gave up. They got burned on a couple of plays, but they stayed with it. They brought some pressure to the quarterback. Seth Russell, you know, that was big. Uh, forced turnovers. That's something they really struggled with in the beginning of the season. This year, they went, you know, Kansas State last week. Forced turnovers, offense wasn't able to capitalize. This week, they forced a turnover, offense capitalized. You know, they put offense in a great position to uh, go down and win at the end of the game. They brought in on third down, Swoops came in. You know, people like him to run up the middle, right? That's what Swoops does. I like it because he ran right down the right side, you know. That set Trent Domingue up on the right hash so that way he could go and set up the game-winning field goal. Yeah, Charlie had a good point after the game, uh, actually this morning, uh, asking Domingue where he wanted the ball, and he just said not in the middle. So, uh, and Charlie just said, well, we're putting on the right side. So I, I thought it was a great decision. I, I love that, the, just the intensity that the defense had and the aggression yeah. that they had. That, that helped a lot. Absolutely. So. Also, this morning, uh, senior, or, uh, sorry, junior tight end Andrew Beck mentioned how fun it is just getting a block for Deontay Foreman, who's now over 1,000 yards. One thing the coaches have emphasized for us that I think we do need to take on the road is when we're at home, we always have a lot of excitement on the sideline. Uh, we kind of cheer each other on. We're the, you know, celebrate and jump around. We make big plays, and we haven't always brought that on the road. Um, and I think as the season's gone on and as we've progressed and matured as a team, uh, we kind of realize that more now. And I think that, you know, it'll be a good challenge for us this week to see if we can bring it on the road with us. And I think it's something we can do. All right, so Deontay Foreman now became the first Texas back since Jamal Charles to reach 1,000 yards since 2007. And he's only two games behind Earl Campbell now for the school record of consecutive 100-yard games. Uh, do you feel like Foreman needs to be in the national conversation with the top backs? Oh, absolutely. I think Deontay has been overlooked this whole season, you know. But, I mean, you go and you look at him. He's third in the country right now in rushing yards per game. That's unbelievable. The two guys in front of him have played one more game than he has. Exactly, you know? yeah. Deontay's a workhorse. Like you mentioned, the 100-yard game. He just had his ninth consecutive. He's going for his 10th this week. That's phenomenal. You know, he is, a, like I said, an absolute workhorse. As a coach, you always tell your players you want them to practice how they're going to play. Deontay does that. He does that. And he's always been that overlooked guy. Even in his recruiting process, coming to high school, twin brother Armani was always that bigger recruit. So I, I love the story about Deontay. He's always been a worker and a hard worker. So great props to him. Now, Coach Strong mentioned this morning that what Texas needs to do is just get off to a good start when they hit the road. We have to do a better job of just a just whole mindset and just be mentally into it. And that's what we haven't been. And, it, we, and there's no excuse for it. It's just we, we have to have that mindset. We have to become road warriors and we have to win on the road. All right, Jordan. So Texas is going to be traveling to Lubbock this weekend. I know you're going to be there as well. What does Texas, and, and also Tech is coming off an upset win of their own over TCU. Right. What does Texas need to do to buck these recent road uh, bad trends? Yeah, you know, they got to put it behind them. Saturday they went out, they beat the eighth ranked team in the country. Celebrate it Saturday night, Just wake up Sunday morning, it's in the past. You got to look forward to next week, right? Yeah. Texas goes, I feel like what they really need to do, because they're facing Patrick Mahomes, right? Guys, should be. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, should be, right? What they need to do is bring pressure and disrupt Tech's pass game. Yeah. This is an air raid offense. It, it reminds me of Cal, kind of. Similar to Cal, you know? It, it, it very is, yeah. That, and 
if they can get pressure, but Tech doesn't have a running game. So, I mean, right. don't let Tech get a running game. Right, absolutely. And I say, you know, with the quarterback, while you bring pressure, if you get burned a couple times, that's okay. We can live, they can live with that, you know. What you need to do is get a quarterback spy maybe on there, all right? Mm -hmm. And then for offense, offensively, Deontay Foreman, Kyle Porter in the backfield, I mean, they should have a day. Tech is oh. ranked 104th for rushing defense. It's going to be pretty exciting to see what these talented Texas running backs can yeah, do. Yeah, I'm ready to see. Even though te even though TCU was not able to do a lot against Tech's defense this past weekend, be interested to see what Texas can do, especially with the running game, because we know Tech has always been a struggle on defense. So, Jordan, appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you Thanks for joining for me tonight. Me when we come back, I'll be heading back over to the desk, and Nick Kuhls will join me to talk about what else went around, the, what else went on around the 40s past week. Stay tuned. Welcome back to College Press Box. We hope you're having a great Halloween evening. Now joining me on the set is Nick Kultz. And Nick, what did you think about that game on Saturday? I thought it was a huge win for the Longhorn football team. I thought it was a huge win for Charlie Strong. But I'll be more impressed with the Longhorns and then keep the momentum and get a win on Saturday in London. Yeah, momentum's key in this, this whole thing. Absolutely. So, even though Texas football had a thrilling victory on Saturday, they weren't the only team in action on the 40 acres. With a conference tournament berth on the line, Texas soccer traveled to Fort Worth on Friday. In the first 12 minutes, Texas would have a 2-1 lead with goals from Chelsea Supree and Morgan Murphy. Texas would then give up another goal before the half, and the game winner in the 63rd minute from Allison Ganter. Texas would lose 3-2. Also, it was announced earlier today that freshman forward Sierra Hinson won Big 12 Freshman of the Year. The Big 12 Cross Country Championships were this past weekend in Lubbock, Texas. The Texas women placed seventh while the men came in third. The Horns didn't finish where they wanted to in the standings, but their season is far from over. The NCAA South Central Regional Championships are two weeks away in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where the Longhorns will try to qualify for the NCAA Championships on November 19th. Freshman Greta Volker shot a record seven un school record 7 under 65 to help lead 14th ranked Texas to a tie for fourth 10 shots behind tournament, ba tournament winner Baylor this past weekend. The Texas Longhorns rowing team was in action on Saturday also. Here in Austin at Lady Bird Lake and the head of the Colorado race. Top finishes included a fourth place finish in women's novice four and a first place finish in women's novice eight. Those were just two of the many boats in action on Saturday as Texas had much success in their fall, final race of the fall winning the entire race. Longhorns will be back in action in the spring at the Longhorn Invitational on March 25th. Texas softball continued their fall season this past week with matchups against McLennan Community College and Galveston College, with both games ending in shutouts for Texas. Freshman Jade Gortares would have the walk-off sacrifice fly to win 1-0 over McLennan on Thursday, while Texas would then run to Galveston on Friday 8-0 behind the 2-for-2 two two and 2-RBI two game from senior infielder Devin Tunney. The team will now travel to San Antonio for two games on Friday and Saturday against UTSA. The Texas Longhorn faithful got their first chance to see the baseball team in action this past week with the 2016 Fall World Series taking place. Team Allen, led by freshman outfielder Austin Todd, took two of the three matchups from Team Miller. Todd won MVP of the 2016 Fall World Series, hitting 583 with six runs, three doubles, a triple, and an RBI. The Horns' regular season begins February 17th against the Rice Owls. The Longhorns volleyball team split their two games this past week over Kansas and OU including a sweep over the rival Sooners here at Gregory. The Horns traveled to Lawrence and fell in five sets with Micaiah White leading the team with 25 kills, while senior Chloe Collins had 43 assists. Texas returns to the court Wednesday when they face TCU on the road on ESPNU. Now, our own Luke Hendry was there at Gregory Gym this past week for the Red River matchup against the Sooners. Red River rivalry that has dominated college sports for years. A tenacious competition, one may think, but not so much for the sport of volleyball. The Longhorns lead the all-time series against OU 47-4 after their most recent straight set victory over the Sooners. Coach Jarrett Elliott expressed the importance of defense in scoring points on that side of the net. He said the team did a great job of that in the third set, holding the Sooners to only 15 points and clinching the Big 12 victory. Tonight I challenged them to come out of the gates and play better defense. That was kind of one of our big goals, and we did that tonight, and we were able to sustain our level of play. And it's, it's, we've been kind of 
working on our defensive mentality and what our rhythm is defensively and how to how to score points and I think they're committed to that process and I think it's been really good and I think our, our block is doing a nice job I think they're getting in front of their hitters and picking better spots and getting over so we're getting good touches and then defensively we're starting to dig some balls around the block and um, it's been a big focus on us and you know when we get touches um, off the block and, and we get good touches off our platforms we're transitioning at a high point and we've got a lot of weapons coming at you. We have many different areas where we can score points and you know, if we can start doing this from a defensive side it's it puts a lot of stress on teams. A clean sweep over Oklahoma improves Texas to 9 and 0 in Big 12 play and 17 and 2 overall. Coach Jared Elliott made it very clear though that the team needs to maintain their focus throughout the remainder of the season. I'm glad that we're going through some struggles at times because it it, talk, it it makes us have good discussions and what we want to do and, and how we can be better and um, you know when you get in the tournament there's nothing easy. So the number two ranked Texas Longhorns will look to continue to play at a high level as well as lean on the shoulders of leaders, including freshman Micaiah White. I just try to do my role and not like just do the best I can at it. Um, and I just have really good like Chloe like just motivating me and telling me like I got it every time. So like I have really good like people like behind me that help me out. Texas still has seven Big 12 matches to complete before heading to the NCAA tournament where the Longhorns will be looking to add a fourth NCAA title to the program's history. Reporting from Gregory Jim, Luke Hendry, College Press Box. Awesome stuff as always from Luke. Nick, I appreciate you joining us tonight. Always a pleasure to be on. Thanks for having me, Tyler. When we return, we have our newest installment of Unhooked with the latest happenings of the college football world outside the 40 acres. Stay tuned. So what do you have to start us off with today, Steve? It was a wild weekend. Let's start off with some of the finishes for the remaining unbeatens. Clemson used a late drive to stay undefeated, and they beat Florida State in Tallahassee. They withstood a big day from Dalvin Cook on the ground to beat the Seminoles in the last, minute, in the last two minutes of the game. Deshaun Watson fired a 34-yard pass to Jordan Leggett for the game-winning touchdown for Clemson's 13th straight victory in the ACC. In Salt Lake City, special teams proved to be the difference between the two Pac-12 frontrunners, Washington and Utah. Let's take a look at what happened this weekend. So Dante Pettis fields the pump from Wisnowski right here. It's a booming kick. Goes back a little and watch him cut through the Utah defenders right here. Each one falling down, red shirts all over the ground, and Dante Pettis just makes his way to the end zone to deliver a 31-24 victory for the Washington Huskies to remain unbeaten in the Pac-12. Four out of the nine undefeated teams going into the weekend now have ones in the loss column. The Big 12 duo of West Virginia and Baylor squandered undefeated seasons and potential playoff appearances. It took an overtime period for Wisconsin to spoil Nebraska's perfect season and a game-winning safety for Wyoming to hand Boise State its first loss. Great, so let's talk Heisman candidates after this eventful weekend. Lamar Jackson comes back with a game winner to beat Virginia. Scary was a good word for how this Louisville team looked this Halloween weekend, barely squeaking by Virginia. But Lamar Jackson figured out how to pull it out and 6'4 wide receiver Jalen Smith used his height advantage to make a game-winning catch from Jackson. Let's take a look at the highlights. So Kent, Kent Burt drops back, puts it right in Johnson's hands on fourth down, who's taken down just short of the end zone. Virginia goes for this two-point conversion. Burkhart finds Dowling all alone to take the 25-24 lead with less than two minutes left in the game. There's 18 seconds left. Lamar Jackson looks long, throws it 29 yards to Jalen Smith for a leaping catch for the touchdown. Louisville holds it together for a win with 32-25.
Another great player who had a great weekend was Jabril Peppers. Jabril Peppers lines up in 10 different positions in, Mich in the Michigan win. Peppers is the first player in the last 10 seasons to have a rush attempt, reception, sack, kick return, and a punt in a single game. Peppers spiced up the game, leading Michigan to a first win over Sparty since 2012. And of course, Washington's Jake Browning and Clemson Deshaun Watson are still in the running after defending their undefeated titles this weekend. Well, that's just about time we have for this week's Unhooked Edition. When we come back, Tyler will give us a look at what's happening on the 40 Acres this week. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to College Press Box. Now let's take a look at what we have this week in Longhorn Sports. Beginning today, going through Wednesday, you have men's golf playing in the East Lake Cup in Atlanta. Also on Wednesday, you have volleyball playing at TCU, and you have men's basketball playing an exhibition against Angelo State. On Thursday, swimming and diving will be taking on A&M, and men's tennis will be at the USTA ITA National Indoors. On Friday, swimming and diving will be taking on North Carolina State, and softball will be at UTSA. Also, going Friday through Sunday, men's tennis will be at the UTSA ITA National Indoors, and women's tennis will be at the Sun Devil Invite. On Saturday, football will be in Lubbock, taking on Texas Tech at 11 a.m., while softball will be in San Antonio, taking on UTSA at noon. On Sunday, women's basketball has their exhibition at Gregory Gym against Charlton State. Now, before we go, Paul Boyette mentioned this morning what his favorite Halloween costume was growing up as a kid. Growing up... I watch Power Rangers, so tonight I probably dress up in a, a, a green or a blue Power Ranger suit, go a little trick or treating, nothing too shabby. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta admit that's one large Power Ranger. I, I know my nephews are in love with Power Rangers, but <laughs> seeing Boyette in a Power Ranger uniform would be pretty interesting. And so, so everyone, stay safe out there tonight. Eat lots of candy, enjoy the night. That's gonna be it for this show. Thank you for spending your Halloween night with us. Tune in every Monday night at 9.30 for College Press Box, and tune in on Wednesdays at 9 o'clock to see what Reese Miller and the panelists have to say about Texas' win over, over Baylor on College Crossfire. Follow us on social media at TSTV Sports and College Crossfire at College X Fire. Thanks to Mackenzie Palmer, Jordan Sanchez, Nick Kuholtz, Kylie Badgley, and Steve Helwick for joining me on the show. Also, thanks to everyone in the studio and here and in Master Control. I'm Tyler King. Have a great night.